Everybody, uh, I would like to introduce the amazing Spencer Crittenden. Welcome, Spencer Crittenden. <laughs> Hello. How's it going? What's up? It's good. It's good. So, a little bit of my story is I started doing a YouTube channel where I talk to people about my favorite things. So, recently I spoke about a game called Mordheim. I was trying to learn about it. It's a Warhammer skirmish game. And then I got a bit deep into the grimdark. But my first love is D and D, and you are my favorite DM in the whole world. Would you like to know why? Why? Sure. Yeah. Thank you so much. I have a list. Oh um, no. Why Spencer is my favorite? Um, you are brave, and you inspire me to rock up and run D and D because we all saw you running up on stage at Harmontown. So you invented the rock up and run. So now I like I kind of try and volunteer if there's people needing one. Mm -hmm. You figure out what players want to do and let them do it by saying that happens. <laughs> and uh, you have the Spencer dance, which I pull out often. <laughs> wow. And um, there was one thing where I just realized like, okay, Spencer's going to be my favorite is you were recording Harmontown and you were challenged to just invent monsters on the spot like this, <laughs> like the tooth monster. And you were like, bam, I have one. Like, the monster that's made out of seashells and you kind of had one yeah so that's, that's why you're my favorite dungeon master <laughs> i th that yeah when i was doing the improvised monsters and stuff i feel like that was maybe the height of my powers i don't know if i'm quite yeah. on what, my game uh, that much anymore you know what arcane powers were you tapping into to receive those monsters just it's we it's a, a, like performing is a really weird thing that i never really had done before and it was like it was like i don't know it was like a very magical time from the harman town tour you know obviously i wasn't on i wasn't on the podcast for very long before they went on the tour mm -hmm. you know and that i think happened on the tour and so it was just this really weird experience where i'm like you know trying to learn to perform and also like on the tour i was on the show a lot more than before because basically they kind of would bring me up just as they were going to start like the D and D or something. And that was it. Yeah. So I wouldn't really be an on stage kind of presence or whatever, uh -huh. but you know, they, on the tour, they didn't really have too much to do because we would just do so many shows. It's not like, that's the thing as a podcast, you kind of got to live life between recordings because otherwise it's like, well, what do you talk about? You know, right. I did, nothing happened, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> unless you have like a topic, but you know, so they were like, well, we don't have anything. We just were on a bus. So like, let's get Spencer out here. And so, you know, it was a completely different, like performing dynamic that was it was really weird but you know people were really enamored with me which was a really weird thing uh never happened in my life you know weird thing to adjust to and then so like performing and seeing people like liking you and stuff it was just very strange and so i think it was this very very weird kind of mix of like just trying to figure stuff out and yeah you know being really supported and stuff and i, yeah. it's, <laughs> I definitely feel like so much more dead than then you know so i think like you know there's you feel so much whatever. more dead than them yeah i just feel like old you know and dying you know like i mean I'm, I'm really, <laughs> i mean i, I relate know, we you know. yeah. yeah it's something happens like that youthful spirit and then you're like oh okay now now we are the end of the mortal coil um so yeah, yeah. really i gotta buy um, cat food you know yeah <laughs> domesticity what yeah. can you do like the daily grind um <laughs> so I guess uh, so. Part of my channel is explaining what D and D is. Mm -hmm. Although if people are watching this, they love D and D. Let's be honest. Sure. Yeah. So if you were going to, you're going to have to just bear with me as I go through my very preschool question. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. If you were going to explain Dungeons and Dragons to someone who never played it before, or you're trying to right. like bring them in, do you have like what would be your like pitch? Well, okay. So I think. 
I, I'll preface this by saying that I think it's uniquely kind of difficult to explain D and D in an effective way. I think if you were like explaining to someone just to get a story across or whatever, you could get there. But if you're trying to pitch as if to say, "I don't know, I don't know what D and D is," convince me I should play D and D with you sometime <laughs> in the you know near future. You know that is like a really complicated and different thing than just functionally. Oh dice etc you know um and and so that's a really hard question i i think for stuff like <laughs> I that i i think that harmon quest is actually really great because you could just kind of show someone an episode of harmon quest and be like look see okay so there's these people they're sitting they're having fun you know it's a game but it's like you're also just hanging out having fun making jokes and you know you can see that happening on the stage and so i think harmon town's really or harmon quest is really great because it's short it's not like a lot of other presentations of D D. um are like really long and they have set up. So it's like, how do you get into it to the point where you can start seeing what I'm talking about, right? Whereas Harmon Quest, I think you get into really, but so that's just all a preface, which is a really hard issue. But if I'm trying to, if I'm trying to pitch someone on d and I'd say like d and is, <laughs> it's a lot <laughs> like um, hanging out with your friends. And also it's kind of like playing pretend as a kid um where you know you're acting out as different characters and you're saying i do this you know or whatever but there's rules to it and and a world that kind of keeps it from just being like you can't kill me i'm invincible so as a result you're playing this interesting fantasy story and and doing fun magical fantasy stuff and you're hanging out with your friends and having a good time and laughing and uh you know it's it's it, you could take it seriously you don't have to take it seriously but it's 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 a fun time with your friends kind of like a poker night but what you're doing is kind of halfway between improvising and playing a weird kind of uh theatrical war game or something you know yeah. um in which i could probably refine it but that's that's off the dome kind of because i i think again that's like good i'm in i'm in <laughs> yeah that's what i like about harmon quest is i think it sells you on the poker night i think without that i think you're like it's just guys tracking stat sheets and a book and dice. Like, it's like, what? Yeah. It's like, no, you're hanging out. You're having beers or whatever. There's chips. You know, it's like yeah, yeah, joking yeah. with your friends. Like, that's a huge part of poker night, you know? And so, uh, yeah. I'm a, I'm a bad player. I If there's any way I can skid around the rules and be like, I could role play or sing around this, I will do that. <laughs> but we can come on to this. I have a section on bad players. Um, <laughs> so could we talk about Baby Spencer and mm -hmm. your first interaction with D and D, do you remember it? I don't know. There's, I have a, I have a number of initial impressions, and I'm not sure exactly which hit first. Okay. So there's, there's kind of three stories. One in about fourth grade, someone just happened upon a, a monster manual, and they might have had the other books, but we were like, clearly there's something here. Let's play D and D, but we didn't have the other books, so we we're like, well, I guess we'll just be monsters. And so we were essentially playing D and D with monster stat blocks. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was fun because you know I, I like monsters, and I don't like humanoids so much. So it was great. I'm like, I'm gonna lose now. You know, it's like we're being oh. news. Yeah. And so it's just fun <laughs> to be monsters. And um, and so that was like the that was that iteration. And and that kind of grew out of reading fantasy books like uh, the Red Wall series and stuff. So I think that kind of inspired our fourth grade uh, fantasy and Lord of the Rings, obviously. Um, so that's that story. Another story is when I was really young, um, probably around that same age. I don't mm -hmm. know exactly because it's it's social life or it's family life. I was at a Thanksgiving with my cousins and one of my cousins was like, let's play D&D. &D, and we rolled up a druid and I had good berry and it was third edition. And we, I don't know if we actually played, we might've just rolled characters, but we might've just barely started. I know we didn't like get anywhere, but I was mm -hmm. like, I got good berry. I'm good to go. I'm eating oh. berries and healing, you know? And I was like, okay. So then I feel like that might've been the legit first D&D &D thing. I just yeah. remember good berry druid. I don't, I see skills. I don't know what's going on. I that don't remember a pure yeah. memory. The druid with the good berry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why it could have just been character. Cause you know, you just set up character sheets and then it's like, let's go eat Thanksgiving dinner. And then it's time yeah. to go home. And then it's like, Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and then the other one is my friend, my next door neighbor was my best friend growing up. And for most of, you know, my younger life. Um, and he was really nerdy and his older brother was really nerdy and his older brother had star Wars role-playing um, books. And so in this also, I can't place this in time relative to the, the Thanksgiving, but this also might've been before the D and D I just don't associate it because it's star Wars and it's playing oh. pretend. So yeah, it's yeah. not like I was like, Oh, D and D role-playing this is an established thing. But I remember making some sort of like, 
It was the guy. There's like these guys that look like hammerhead sharks in like yes. Star Wars. Yeah, I, I, I had yeah, I had a Star Wars character like that who he was a mechanic and he he can like repair repulsor vehicles or something. <laughs> and so we played very briefly uh, as that. I think I had like a pet alien or something um, that was like oh. one of your character sheet. You could have a pet alien. <laughs> And so like so we didn't get very far in that either but i remember doing that and i just remember like i have all these skills that are like repulsor repair skills they're great for <laughs> like jet engines and star wars spaceships i'll be great at fixing these or something it never came up <laughs> you know, but we didn't get very far in that either but well, i can't sure. remember somebody in the comments will tell us what that alien is called the name of the space <laughs> you had the name of the alien that you got so Wonderful. Yeah, I remember that the archetype, like it was in the book that you could kind of pick the archetypes. I think those were like classes, but they might have been a bit different than classes. But the the archetype was cynical scout is what it was called. Amazing. From yeah. Goodberry Druid to cynical scout, it <laughs> happens. Um, so I was doing a little bit of research and there's one story about that you say where you played in college and then D&D made you feel bad. So you stopped for a bit. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, could you tell me one uh, one occasion how D D made you feel bad and then one occasion where D D made you feel really good you don't have to answer that i don't want to take you yeah to no it's all good i'm just trying to think of like the thing is you know D D is a social game and as right. a result how it plays out is a reflection of the social dynamics already at play or it can distort and change and, and kind of pervert those but you know it's it's playing it's social so it's playing off of social dynamics you know i had a podcast where people would say like how do i have this problem and this problem and we found out like turns out that dnd is a social game so the answer is not clear because it's a social answer and a social answer is going to depend a lot on norms your group dynamics a lot of things that you know your relative power in your group you know <laughs> like all sorts of things like you know you might have to be tactful you might be able to be like this is crazy you know who knows but <laughs> it's so it's hard giving blanket statements without knowing but as a as a social game you know the social dynamics kind of kind of have problems but uh but so what would happen was for a long time i was the only dm in our friend group and then we started getting more friends and playing in more games and stuff um but i would basically not get invited to be a player in a game unless i was the dm already so it's like i was dming for years and then finally other people are dming and so it's like great i can actually play you know and then it's like well i'm not even <laughs> then i can't get into any of these games and mm -hmm. it's like man it's always so much work i would always burn out as a dm like i i like uh, I, you know i'm a figure in the community i am uplifted and stuff but in my real life DD experiences i burn out pretty fast and early and our games end up being pretty like limited compared to a lot of other experiences you know i know that's common too but yeah but so it happens a lot um and so that would happen a lot to me and um you know maybe that's why people don't like it i don't know but so <laughs> i wouldn't get invited and then the rare times i would get invited um it would just not be very fun like mm. the two ways it wasn't fun is uh, one way was there was a player that was basically the main character of the quest and he had a lot more magic items than everybody and he had like Sorry. abilities on top of that and it, the story was bent on him and he had like NBCs at his disposal and it was just <laughs> like what is going on like who is like, driving how is yeah, this happening yeah and first of all it's like i'm fine if on his turn he's doing max damage and it's like okay i'm just gonna cast shield or something like that's one thing but it's like why does everyone care so much? Like he has to dominate so much percentage of time that we're all spending. It's like that you can be crazy awesome and still take up your, you know, cause D and D is like a, a pie chart where hopefully everyone gets the, 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 the piece they want, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be an equal piece, but it's the piece they want. If they want a small piece, they should get it, you know? Um, but you know, they're taking up Oh, my cat's throwing up. Ugh, oh boy. Oh no. I'll have to clean that up. Well, that's the, you know, the perils of live performance, you know, where it might be in my, well, the, I feel like never happened before Zoom. Jason wanted that piece of the pie chart and we have to give that. So. Yeah. But uh, so <laughs> that was just a really weird experience, obviously. Um, and I don't think that's too common, but maybe that happens. But the other one was just that there would be a lot of just boring combat that was very mm. samey. Like I remember one time we fought, a pretty standard construct without like much to say in his abilities and it was in like a 30 foot square room and then we we beat him and went to another 30 foot square room and fought an identical oh. construct and we did a third time 
and it was just like three hours and i'm like <laughs> <laughs> what, what what why any of this this isn't none of like i mean i i, I, I have pray, to i pray that you were in fifth and not fourth at that time it was in fourth no it oh. was in fourth um which is like uh, which i i like fourth more than other people maybe less than my the rest of my group but you know i i think we we gave fourth a pretty good shake when it came out yeah um but, but doesn't like combat is it more crunchy and more extended in fourth or yeah and it just wasn't interesting like it wasn't it just wasn't it wasn't like the monster wasn't being interesting it was just yeah, not yeah. dying and so the monster like, was not sassy we're, enough <laughs> we're just this is so boring it's just and so like uh, uh yeah and so uh, i don't know and and I, so i wouldn't get invited to the games and then sometimes when I, the few times when i would it would just be a real bummer and so i'd be like well and this sucks like and so i was just like i'm i'm just i'm i'm done it makes me feel bad when i think about yeah. it I'm not going to think about it. <laughs> okay. So side question. Mm -hmm. If you're feeling bad at the table and you're bummed out, like, can people tell? Or do you do like the sulky teenager? Do you go quiet? Do you go on your phone? Well, I go quiet. Oh, another bad thing about the group is they would get rip fucking drunk, including the DM. And then it would just, <laughs> nothing would happen. Oh, um, no. <laughs> but, but so, okay. Um, so I wouldn't get quiet. Well, I would get kind of quiet, but I would, I think I had a pretty good, you know poker face or whatever i don't think i would let on but the way i would let on is people would go be all like okay now it's time to take the weed break after everyone's already really drunk okay. everyone would smoke for like 30 minutes come back in and then drink a lot more and then everyone was just fucking gone and i think <laughs> like maybe they'd wait an hour and try and get back to it and play like a really drunken thing but it's like it's basically going to be two hours until like anything happens and maybe it's done and so when that would happen i would usually be all like all right i'm going to take off and i think they took that really personally which i you know that's my bad whatever but that's i think they're so like bad. oh spencer doesn't like hanging out with us and i was like no i don't like playing DD, but everyone can't play DD because everyone's trashed and then also the DD sucks outside of that too it's just like i'm just gonna go home and go to bed i don't want to stay up until four in the morning doing this right now because i don't drink and if you're same, not drinking same. everyone else is drunk it just sucks like especially if it's like i'm trying to play D, &D and they're like eh, i'm drunk everyone's <laughs> like i thought something really funny i'm gonna do this and you're like oh this isn't funny you're ruining a campaign we've worked nine months on so yeah I, but yeah. at the same time you know I probably could have handled it better than just like ghosting them because, you know, I don't know. I, I did a lot of Irish goodbyes at parties and stuff and I never took it very serious, but I think it can, it can make people feel bad. And I don't think I considered that adequately. And so that could have been why I didn't get like invited very much or something like who knows? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I was the... doing stuff back. Who knows? I'm not I'm, trying to be I'm loving. Leader. I'm loving your self-reflection, but I would yeah. like, to, I'm not a priest, but I'd like to absolve you because some people who get like bummed out at a table can like tip the table or like foul up everyone else's play. Okay. That's the thing. I just like all just get out of here, get out of your hair. Like it just, it felt like the right move. That was a good thing. It was like the right decision. So I am absolving you with none of no priestly power. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, and then could you tell me about a good or really positive, like super happy D and D experience? Um, yeah i guess i'll just talk about like uh before like harman town and everything just just because i don't know maybe it's more pure but there was um i was the dm in a group and this game also didn't go super long um but i had this cool idea for a guy who had like a bad guy who had his dungeon was like a crazy alchemical laboratory so he was like a mad scientist alchemist kind of mm -hmm. guy and he had like a fly chamber, you know, like the fly, the movie, the fly, a Ooh, teleporting okay. chamber. Right, right. And, and basically when the dudes get like, so there was like flesh golems with like chemical, like fusions and potion kind of things and magical living spells, you know, just weird kind of magical kind of mechanics for the dungeon. And then at the end, um, he, uh, you get to him when he's in at the fly chamber and he gets in the fly chamber, um, uh -oh. but there's like something I, I think it's a bunch of potions or something are in the other are in the other thing there just happened to be there and so or he fuses with a bunch like of potions this. and becomes this big like hulk with a bunch of like potion tubes sticking out of his back so he can like invoke potion effects and spit different potion kind of effects and he's just like this big hulking kind of bane kind of monster on top of that that's just like kind of almost like a little bit like a beholder but more like breath weapons and potion effects just like randomly firing off between 
between like punching people and um <laughs> it was a cool boss fight and then everyone's like we got this thing does anyone want to try to like fuse with stuff that guy was like fusing with stuff and oh so no people oh, just no. decided to <laughs> pick random magic items that they had and try to fuse with them and so one person <laughs> fused with the decanter of endless water and so he can like <laughs> blast water out of his body and someone fused with the the the, the, the real joy was that someone fused with a bag of holding and oh. because we're like teenagers or whatever we were like okay your butthole is a bag of holding and so people were like stuck like he would just stuff everything into his butt you know and it's and it was just it was just he was like it was really funny because we just go around and he'd like stuff everything in his butt and it was just like it was just a lot of fun and we, everyone was being like fused with i could never have guessed that i just thought it was a cool kind of boss setup you know and it was just like and this is like and that's the thing it's it's hard to explain to people but that's what's cool about dnd is it's mm -hmm. that doesn't happen in a video game it's stuff that it's you can never expect it and it's really unique and specific and cool and it's even kind of hard to explain because it's so specific to the circumstances right. and being there and stuff that that is just these these really specific moments you know and i think that's yeah. like so it was really pure and really awesome it's just like, I, like, it's a big, I, I mean i don't know i think pure i yeah no with the butthole but no i mean that's wonderful I, when you said, oh, there's a fly chamber, I was going to a really dark place. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really glad it was like, yeah, that's very pure indeed. <laughs> um, yeah, I am. It's a real joy to talk to you because I've been really kind of steeped into this thing called the Grimdark, which is the Warhammer setting. Mm -hmm. Have you ever dabbled in the Grimdark? Not specifically. I mean, I've followed Warhammer 40K, you know, on and off. I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a scholar in it, but i did like the grim dark isn't something that rings a bell to me other than just you know obviously it's been described as grim dark 40 yeah oh yeah i guess yeah my language is bad i guess i it's just the it the setting is kind of without hope and yeah the, it's 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 almost comic like it's it's almost funny how crazy it is i know i know so this is an absolute joy you're bringing the joy back into my life <laughs> um i loved you had a description of D D as a world simulator mm-hmm so could you speak on that a little bit? I just thought that was a really sweet Yeah, way. and honestly, okay, so so let's preface this by saying, I think that this to me is a little bit of a weakness and like a myopia that I don't think is necessarily good. And I'm kind of trying to to question it a little bit as an ethos, but in d and I would all, cause okay, because D&D &D spurred from playing pretend and for us playing pretend was role-playing just without knowing that role-playing games existed and had set rules that involved dice and certain kind of precedented mechanics. So because of that, I would just become the DM and people would say, I do this and I do that. And I would just be like, that seems like it would work. It works. So like literally anything that seems, and so it's like, it seems like you probably could block an attack. Sure, you do, you know, yeah, where yeah. if it's like, but it's like, that's impossible. You can't, like, you can't jump 40 feet in the air for no reason, you know? And so, so, but, but basically everything people wanted to do that to me seemed like it would functionally make sense in my simulation of this pretend world as i saw it as a fourth grader or whatever you know um it would it, it would happen and so like that's that's kind of how i carried on it's like what this is is it's, i'm trying to like simulate this real world with consequences and the characters don't exist to service the players they're real breeding characters with lives and needs and yeah. if you grab one by the shoulder and decide to ask him 50 questions in a row while he's on the way to work he's not going <laughs> to answer every one of them he's going to be like dude i gotta get to work and it's not because he's suspicious and it's not because i'm the dm trying to hide information from you it's because to me it's unreasonable that the person yeah. wouldn't do that right yeah. um and so that that's kind of like a world sim and, and similar you know like i think people would get on on harmontown like sometimes like aaron would have ideas ideas that I would be like, no, that doesn't work. Because again, I would be like, this doesn't make sense to me. Like yeah. physically I'm, I'm simulating and it's like, that wouldn't happen the way you think it would. So it's not going to work. But when you think about it, so again, questioning this, this, this ethos, like I was saying, it's like, it's fake. It's, it's mm -hmm. fake. It's all made up. And it's all made up for the purposes of having a good time with your friends and doing kind of cool, fantastical stuff. So if it can be cool and interesting and you're playing to that, when it breaks against the simulation that could be really good so that's kind of like a blind spot i would have is not seeing those opportunities and i think those opportunities are there sometimes 
why bother making the guy walk off because he has to get to work? It doesn't <laughs> matter to simulate that. Like maybe it'll be a lot more helpful. And like, again, like when you get into the situations where it's like, oh, this guy's hiding someone or something, or the DM doesn't want to reveal this information, you send the wrong signals. And it's like, no, I'm not trying to send those signals. And so it's like, yeah, you can break the simulation when you want to send the right signals or you want to kind of encourage the kind of play, because at the end of the day, you're facilitating a kind of gameplay, right? Um, you know, and, and you want to want to do it in a way that helps everybody um and so like that's that's a way i've kind of like broken against that idea a little bit but 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 i do think there is value in in being like yeah you're not the center of the world just because you're the heroes of the story doesn't mean everyone's gonna like bend over backwards to help you out and to to sacrifice their interests and stuff right. you know i i think that's that's a fine balance to strike uh, Spencer, two of your answers already could have been YouTube videos with their own <laughs> subjects. Like this isn't it's so good. Like it's really oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> it's great to see how your brain works. You are oh, back yeah. for money, my friend, and I'm not even paying you. Although I, I am gonna send you a gift. Um thank you. That's also, awesome. um Erin um was I went through a terrible breakup mm -hmm. maybe four or five years ago before COVID lockdown, and I started the podcast called Girls on Tour Podcast, where mm -hmm. I interview uh, like inspirational women and I was like you travel let's talk about what you take when you travel she was one of the people that was like sure you can interview me so she kind of helped build me up to be able to like email my favorite dm in the world <laughs> so thanks to Erin <laughs> uh -huh. um so um you do a lot of writing now you have lots of creative projects like you do all the things so I was just wondering like was this this crucible where you were a dungeon master that did writing for D&D and then you kind of began to work with Dan and now you do everything and D&D. &D. So how did you working closely with Dan, like lend into your writing? Like, do you now use a story circle when you're writing D&D &D or like, how did it all meld together? Uh, so I think that like, I don't know. I think that it's it's kind of subtle, the a lot of the stuff that I've learned from from working with Dan and stuff, just because I think the most valuable stuff that I got was from sitting in the writer's room and seeing how various people talked about it in terms of critiquing, like finding flaws with this and that story and thinking about, oh, this is a flaw, but this might be a fix. And then if you're thinking about a flaw, be thinking about different dynamics and just like, like being, being critical and, and analyzing different stuff and like how to kind of, how to kind of deconstruct and talk about various elements of stories because mm -hmm. a lot of creative stuff is just hard to talk about because the jargon might not be fully developed or it might be very personalized or it just might involve concepts that are hard to put into words like it's hard to talk about visual concepts with words because they're visual they're not words you know right. i could say a line and that could mean a million different things uh -huh. but um like i think i think like just just learning how to talk about it helps you know how to think about it and then when you're thinking about it and you think the right thought when you're on the on a certain problem that can lead to like a breakthrough and and i don't know so i think like i've been i've been i've been really helpful at helping other people analyze stories and give notes and stuff and break down what might not be working and that's that's been from like analyzing that and I think I've also learned a lot just about characters because the story circle is fundamentally about like making the character central to what's happening. And, and I think that's a big part of everything. I think it comes into D and D a lot too. Um, but maybe in D and D you can get, a, no, I think it is a big D and D lesson, but it's just like, you can't tell story without characters unless you're using a narrator, you know, and a narrator's character. <laughs> so <laughs> like, because like i always say like this is writing stuff but if the bank is going to take your house there's no bank that walks in and takes your house right. either the dad says the bank's gonna take our house or some guy says i'm the bank manager and i'm gonna <laughs> take your house like either way that's a character it's the dad or the bank guy but it's a character it's not the metaphysical concept of the bank mm -hmm. which in our lives that's what it is we're not thinking of a character like we're like i owe the bank you know um so like to to sell concepts and to explain exposition you really need characters and a lot of times that can be npcs um, and so like a big lesson for me is just like, yeah, just have have NPCs for everything. Always be introducing NPCs that you can use later, like because you need you need NPCs to explain stuff. So always be putting there and make the the people kind of comfortable interacting with them on some level. Right. So, you know, they start to progressively go like, can you tell us what's going on? And you don't have to like, yeah. like be like, ah, oh, 
<laughs> the red solstice is upon us, you know, or whatever, and like kind of force, you know, if they have investment in a character, yeah. then they're like, oh, you're sighing? Oh my God, you know, and then it's like, oh, I have a problem, you know? Yeah. And so I think that was a big thing. And that's big in writing too, is just characters. It's And it's not how I think, because mm -hmm. in D&D, &D, I think about maps and metaphysical concepts and cool monsters and traps and puzzles. <laughs> like I don't, right, yeah, yeah, I yeah. don't, I, th I think the players will bring the characters and I will respond right. to those characters, you know, but, but thinking about, and so it's actually been really weird kind of transitioning as a writer to like kind of exclusively trying not to think about characters at all. And I hate conflict um, because, you know, I'm a passive terrified person. So I, I just, mm -hmm. I, I hate conflict. So thinking about conflict, which is the basis of like storytelling writing is like right. really stressful and hard for me. So like, but, but learning, you know, from Dan and stuff has thought, taught me a lot more about trying to think in those dimensions that you tend not to have to go uh, into, well, not you have to, but I tended not to go into because that was not my like most compelling interest was like this overarching story. I, yeah. I would make the stories too big and then the, the players would never get through them before I would burn out. So. Right, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I love, um, I, you know, I heard somewhere that you like to kind of come up with like a cool concept and then that, like this, I want this to happen. I want there to be a fly chamber and then, so it sounds like you kind of got these extra onion layers and levels now to play with. So that's really cool. Thank you. Yeah. yeah it's, it's great because I think a lot of people come into D&D &D and then they will either be a character or, or, or a DM. And it's a pretty constant level. Like, this is how I do it. So I just think it's great that you got exposed to that world and then you could meld it all in. You went into the fly chamber. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here are a couple of like just dumb quick questions. Mm -hmm. So I quite often enjoy watching you sit in your car eating delicious food. Sure. Not as creepy as it sounds. I pay to do it. Not as creepy as that sounds. It's part of your offering. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> um, but like, uh, are there any must have snacks when you're d and Ding, and is there anything that people eat at the table you're like this is too gross please no is everything no, acceptable at your table i think so yeah i mean i think like if you have a whole meal even like ramen just soup. take a break <laughs> yeah like i'd say just take a break and eat you know not not eat during like if it's a whole meal but i think that's fine to even take a break and eat like a full or yeah like you know in the past sometimes we would cook like food as a group and or like some of us would and then other people would come up and then we'd all eat and then we'd play you know yeah. D &D. and like i think there's there's a lot of room for that and i don't i don't i don't think about snacks um i never bring them and then i'm always like i wish i had them you know other people have traditionally picked up on that or like you know like brought their own snacks or brought snacks for the group or whatever so yeah. i never really had to but um yeah, I always think of like I'm the DM. Someone else think of snacks, you know. Yeah, they should. <laughs> Honestly, that is really valid. That should be tribute. The DM should at least be fed. It's so weird. Like for some reason, how I came into like D and D, however it was, I kind of learned that you bring your own snacks, and you know, everyone. Oh, they bought their thing. I bought my thing. I have so weird. Like yeah, these things. I mean, happen. it's all. I think it all works. There, there's all sorts of ways yeah. to do it. You know. I don't yeah. Know. Absolutely. Um, favorite Dungeons and Dragon monster. Sorry, I have to ask. Yeah, it's got to be Mind Flares. I didn't have to think very Really? Long. They're so yeah. scary. Yeah. Um, so third edition was when I was really hitting D&D uh, &D the hardest. Like I was the youngest and the most kind of drenched in it. Mm. I had tons of splat books and had more as like pirated PDFs and stuff. But one of the books I had early on was The Lords of Madness, which was a deep dive into, I want to say, four to six different aberration types. There was Grells and Beholders and Aboliths and uh, Mind Flayers and Neogi. I guess there's more. There's maybe like eight uh, and a couple others. I can't remember. They've fallen out of like popularity and I can't remember their names, but they would be really in depth. They would be like uh biological anatomic anatomical like writings like like Ugh. like explaining like oh this is the seromorphosis process process of the mind flare and 
explaining how their society worked and Ugh. had these big city maps and and broke it all down and and just all sorts of stuff and just like aberrant mind flares and they did this for beholders and everything and i just like the mind flares just really sucked me in for whatever and i just always i thought they were really cool oh you know what so in in final fantasy tactics which is a video game for the playstation uh -huh. you fight a creature that is just a mind flare um and it looks like a mind flare except it has a squid tail coming out of the back of the head as opposed to like a rounded kind of octopus head right um but it was just it's called a mind flare and you fight it and i was like that's the coolest thing and then when i found out that was in D, &D i was like ah yeah. <laughs> so i think that's like that's actually but the lord of the madness was like a really cool i really like felt like I, i'm, I'm yeah. a mind flare expert you know i think my flares are having a renaissance because they were a stranger thing they were in stranger things and m most recently the mandalorian um mm -hmm. one of the scientists just got put in the not the mind flare but it's a machine so <laughs> like it's coming back it's coming back yeah. um okay and then sorry i'm just rattling through my it's question good. Don't worry about it. um i'm ju i'm just a nervous person so it's kind of <laughs> good knowing that you also have these nervous moments so oh yeah just show my vulnerability mm -hmm. um when you are when you are like doing monster voices have you ever ha felt like you need to kind of play into character voices and do, where do they come from? I'm really, really bad at voices. I, I've always been bad at voices. I remember being in like middle school and my friends would do impressions and like voices as part of their like joke around humor. Uh -huh. And I was like, this is incredible. How did he do this? Like it's just like <laughs> it just felt impossible. It just seemed like some something that couldn't be done to alter yeah. someone's voice. I felt like I, I this is something I thought more of lately. But I feel like I think so hard about what I'm gonna say that it's like it all builds up and then it just explodes out of my mouth that I can't even like it's not a matter of what my mouth is doing, how my voice sounds. It's like that's not it's just completely random. It's hard to replicate. Yeah. It's just like and so like I feel like I don't put a lot of intentionality into that. And so like like character work is exactly that. I've been very, you know, from Harmontown and stuff, I've been trying to do a little bit better, but even just sticking in character or like what a character's voice does in different stuff, like in different moods. Mm. and different like volumes is like i it's really past my expertise so really it's just kind of fucking around and trying stuff is the yeah. only thing like i i do because it's like i'm not gonna nail this i'm gonna forget and lose the voice i'm gonna forget what these person sounds like like it's gonna happen over and over but <laughs> I, I i guess uh, uh the only this is so stupid but you know i have the gnome voice is like maybe the only yeah. voice i have other than like the low voice which is that gnome voice like, made you a lot of money voice sure i mean i like it but it's just you know it's not really anything it's just like ah you know it's i just... prefer the gnome ads to normal yeah. voice ads but i mean i really look forward to it because you knew when there was going to be like a put upon npc what he would sound like if you were doing him so i really look forward to the different voices you pulled well, yeah most of my npcs are put upon but <laughs> i think True. i think that the gnome voice came from and this is so stupid but uh, jimmy neutron was a cartoon oh yeah i didn't even really watch like i i, I everyone watched it. i didn't love it i mean you know you could watch anything if it's on but like mm. I, I it wasn't like something i like but but at the end they had a production card for like a studio because it was like made in cg and so this was like the like the 3d animation studio that made the show or whatever and it would be like a monkey with three eyes i think and and the monkey would it was 3d animated and it was he would go hi i'm paul <laughs> and i think that like it's not quite the voice but i think like that kind of is where i'm, I'm centering the voice around i was like what's going on you yeah. know that, that it, it, and then just kind of it's not exactly how paul would do it i'm sure but that's that's paul what, like, spoke to your soul yeah yeah oh <laughs> yeah. that's wonderful and yeah. um, if I was to sing, here I am. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that is. <laughs> D and D fans, I don't think this is a D and D thing. I think um, this might be something else. So basically, when I do videos, <laughs> I I write a theme song uh -huh. for every video. Oh yeah. What I do is I find like a really um epic like orchestra mm -hmm. like a really thing and then i sing a dumb song over it so wow yeah so i am gonna sing a song for me interviewing you and do you have any uh hints or tips is there anything you'd like me to include 
I was trying to find a rhyme to Crittenden. Mm -hmm. Hitting them? <laughs> Yay! I don't know. Um, <laughs> the, the Moomin pencil will write this down. <laughs> it's a nice pencil. Thank you. Uh, and um, singing, singing in your uh, D and D games and in your daily life, do you sing? Uh, just, yeah, just for a little who bit. Don't know. Sure, I yeah. was trying to tease you into singing a famous song, and you know what the song is. Don't yeah, sing. it's it's a it's not a it's not a good song. It's a weird <laughs> acapella, no comedic it, song okay. that I didn't come up with i you know i i don't know it's i don't want it to reflect of it was not my idea like it's no, just some I, weird I, we, we can leave it there if you it's, know you it's know. not even it's probably not problematic i don't think it is i don't know it's just it's i thought it was really funny to just completely leave you hanging in front of an audience that presumably would not you see i know what you were doing <laughs> i'm super flushed this will be one of those moments most watched moments <laughs> well yeah. i said to my friend I think I'm gonna sing in front of front of Spencer, and sure. either he'll join in or leave me hanging, and either will be funny. So I can sing with you, just not on that. I don't think that's a good song for us. Oh my gosh, like, what could we sing together? I, I I don't know. I mean, I'm not. I'm not. It's not the singing that I that I take issue with. No. Um. Do you ever like write songs or like for fun or for your campaigns or anything? Is it part of your like Spencerdom? No, I think I think I naturally um. You know, I I think a lot of people, they kind of mess with lyrics on their own in part because they don't know the lyrics. They're just like, what could it be just messing around, you know? Mm -hmm. And I do that. And, you know, sometimes when I'm messing around, like having fun, I try to do parodies of, of songs and stuff. Um, not like full blown, but, you know, just of certain lines and then just trying to like messing around and be like and sing them like that. I, I it would be this would be a perfect opportunity to have some sort of example, but I don't. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, but, I yeah. always always play bards. I have like I think it's my first ever bard mini. Mm -hmm. She was called Fickle. <laughs> She's incredibly badly painted. Um, I like so, that. Like when things are kind of slowing down, like I quite. And this is why I'm a horrible DM. Sometimes I'm like, there's a karaoke village challenge. If anybody sings, maybe you'll get an inspiration point. And wow. some people really hate that. So mm -hmm. um, funny. I think uh, a lot of times because I'm just struggling to kind of validate my existence. I'm like, I, we could sing a funny song together. And it's like my go to, which is a very strange go to, but. Well, you make a song for every episode. I this is this is clearly yeah. It's, it's, this is your domain. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. It just makes me happy because I think people will be like, "What the hell happened?" Or they'll just laugh. So, yeah, I've been I've been trying to like I don't know. I've been hanging out with my friends, and sometimes they'll play music, and my friend has a dog named Haley, and you know it's the classic thing to just like put dogs in songs and stuff. Yeah. But I've been just trying to like just kind of like rap or like come up with like songs where it's just kind of with whatever music's going on. Like I'm the Haley dog. I'm here to eat and I want to get all of the meat, get it off the table and in my mouth, you know, and just like, just kind of like that, you know, just like that, that kind of thing, just kind of messing around, just kind of vaguely musical. It doesn't usually yeah. you maybe get three couplets in or you collapse, but it's just, you know, messing around. I do stuff like that, you know, and you do yeah. that with good paradise stuff. It's just basic, you know, just fucking around. I don't know. Yeah. You have good word smithery. So I guess, you know, that helps when you're doing that kind of stuff. Yay. Yeah. I think you just got to be quick. Thank you for joining in that section. I love you even more. You're wonderful. Um, I was going to just mention how much I love Spencer dance and I pull that out at weddings and stuff. So mm. thank you. That's impressive. Ugh, I got to see that. That sounds great. I mean, yeah, I think there's a video of me pulling out at a wedding and people moving away from me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think you're a danger to others if you're doing that dance. I think it's a it, it doubles as a self-defense move. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, I will. I will see if I can send you the video. Um, awesome. Uh, do you play any board games? I mean, no, I think so. I think the the tip my my typical routine with board games is like someone's like we should play a board game they get a board game um you know i'm spending the whole time vaguely learning how to play and i'm way behind because i don't know what's going on mm 
Mm. And then we stop and we never play the board game again. If we ever hang out again, we play a completely different board <laughs> game. One. And so yeah. it's like, I'm always just way behind. And it's like, that doesn't feel great. It's like, mm. you know, if it were more constant in the same game and I could get, get up on it a little bit, that'd be different, but it always feels. And then in the past, a lot of times I've noticed that people are really bad at explaining games. I'm pretty good at explaining games. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm yeah. good at explaining stuff. I, I that's that's something I value. Like I try really hard. Um, but it's really hard to learn a new game when someone is bad at explaining it mm. and doesn't just want to let me kind of like process it on my own. Because, <laughs> but also it can be hard to just read it and do it. You know, it's like that's why it's really helpful to have someone who's good at explaining games. And again, I'm good at that. So like, you want me at a game night when there's new games because I'll know what to say what not to say what to just get started with what needs to be said before like i i'm a i'm a fucking genius i like your your viewers should understand they I'm should understand real... that's why i was so excited to have you on <laughs> but so but and so so it just it taps into a lot of things that are insecurities or annoyances and so it's like i'm just gonna and avoid mm -hmm. it if i can but but i don't have a lot of big gamey friends either you know to get into it with yeah. so well, I was going to talk like you're very kind of Hollywood adjacent just by your geography, right? Mm -hmm. So what we've witnessed over the past few years is like this resurgence of popularity with D&D. &D. Yeah. Like peak threshold now where like Wizards of the Coast are hiring in movie stars to come talk about new stuff. And we have a whole D&D &D movie, which I thought was really fun. Um, yeah, I really liked it. Yeah. Oh, I yay. What, what is, I mean, I really hate the Displacer Beast. Even uh -huh. just to play, I, I, it gives me the willies, as we say in the UK. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I didn't like it. I love that they jumped into a gelatinous cube. I love that they had the Hasbro um, cartoon kids in there as well. Mm -hmm. um, what did you like about it? I'm so happy because I have some cynical friends who were like, mm, but I thought it was really fun. Yeah, I think that like, I, I, I think that it was just, I did not have complaints. I think you can make the argument it was predictable but I think that, I don't know, there's there's something that you could say is really heavily telegraphed to someone who uh, would look for predictable things in the movie. Mm -hmm. There's there's something that happens in that movie. And even that I think worked to me and the whole audience bought it. And I was like, if something can be that predictable and still work, right. then like, what are you mad about? And so it's like, I think that's the biggest flaw is that I think you could say it's predictable, but it's great. I think like, I think, oh. I think it's so hard. Are you good? Yeah, I'm sorry. I yeah, I, I'm having notifications. Good. Yeah, sorry. No, no, don't worry. It's all good. I just wanted to make sure you didn't have to like take a call or something. No, <laughs> it's good. Thank you. But the D and D is so specifically good, and the humor and like the flavor of how D and D adds to the story is so subtle, and and it's a hard balance to nail. Like like you know you see it on screen, but if you were trying to like say like I want the movie to feel like this and like that about D and D, yeah. you know it's like how do you actually land that plane? And I think they did. It's a really crazy balance that they managed to strike. I think it's just so fun and so freaking funny that mm -hmm. I think any minor complaints you have, you you get past. And again, I think the main thing is predictable, but yeah, it's like, it's a D and D campaign. I'm sure a bad guy's gonna come and we're gonna have to deal with them, you know? Like, yeah, so yeah. I was like, it's like, <laughs> what do you expect? You know, um, and so, but but it doesn't, what I was just realizing the other, the other day was that it's really cool that it doesn't go super deep into lore that's hard to parse, which is what people associate with D and D and right. what I like to, try and promote is not D and D like, it's not like, that's, what's fun about my D and D is you don't have to know like 400 years ago, the wizards conspired, you know, um, yeah, yeah. like, like you could just be like, I'm going to fart on the Pope or whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's just, it's silly. And that was the kind of D and D you saw in that movie, yeah. you know, but, but also it's just like, you know, a displacer beast. We, we, someone might say what it is and then we see it, yeah, you know, yeah, you, yeah. you, they, 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 they name check the Mordenkainen's arcane seal. And it's yes. not like you guys know Morden Kanan and you see him spending years perfecting the seal. It's no, yeah, you yeah. say the seal. If you know what it is, it's fine. If you don't, you get it's a magical lock of some kind. It's a barrier, you know, and it's like nothing, nothing needed explaining like that. You know, mm -hmm. like, if and, you know, you'll probably realize like you go think about any, you see a bird man. You don't have to know it's an Aarakocca and that they hail no. from whatever. It's like, no, it's a freaking bird man. His name is Jonathan. <laughs> you know, it's like. 
<laughs> it's fun. That's what I mean. It's Jonathan. It's funny. It's like it's funny the right way. If there's like there, there's a there's a runner with potatoes, and I was like, that's kind of a hacky joke. But it's like not every joke is perfect. But like I yeah. think it's it's just so fun and funny, and it's confident. And I think it's just. I don't, there's just there's some huge laughs and i and i okay, think it really yeah, sells yeah. what's fun about D. &D. i don't know there's like <laughs> this is the joke i don't know how intentional this was i want to know what you think of it because you saw it but there's a lot of sequences not sequences there's a lot of shots that are these wide giant shots of travel that are these interstitial like oh we're going from here to there and so yeah, it'll yeah, be yeah. usually three or four shots that's like oh big big forest a uh, volcano giant mm -hmm. mountain the idea being like in D, &D we travel over these vast crazy right. biomes right and it's very fantastical but at, 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 at a point you keep seeing them and I was like, this feels like a joke. It feels like, okay, we're going to see three of these shots and then we're going to be somewhere else. It was like, it's funny because, but that also is the idea is we got to go there. We got to go all the yeah. way back and we got to go all the way back. And it felt like a tongue in cheek joke that might not even register as a joke and just felt like a beautiful fantasy pastiche, but also, and it's like, that's, that's what I feel like. It's just like, you're, it's, uh, it was just so fun. It was just so fun. I mean, that's so interesting. My um, flatmate Fiona, who like, loves loves uh rpg she does a whole podcast on one shots and stuff mm -hmm. she came home and she was like um i kind of would have liked had they stayed in one place and really like explored the crap out of it like you know it felt like a lot of like oh we're here we're there and i'm kind of cynical so i'm thinking okay underdark so that's gonna sell out of the abyss okay we're here now so that's gonna sell i know because I love D&D, but I'm aware that they will not miss a marketing opportunity. Um, but, but also D&D is about going to disparate places back and forth right. and just seeing seeing a bunch of different, like, it's kind of like, it's, I don't know if you play Minecraft, but an underrated part of Minecraft is it is kind of weird that you have this mount, like you have a desert and then mm -hmm. right next to the desert is a giant glacier. And then right, right next to that is a rainforest. It's like, yes. when you're playing a video game, it's like, you just kind of take it for granted, but that is kind of silly and in, in D&D is the same way, you know, and I, and I think that that's a cool thing to showcase and campaigns are often structured like that too, where it's not like, we're not really getting into the mechanics of the water deep economy or whatever. It's like, yeah, no, we're seeing true. these big splashy tropes and we're getting out and it's not, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not complicated. And, and I, and again, like, I think that's like, they want to showcase, this is a fun, I feel like it's this poker night thing. It's like, it's, it's fun. It's silly. It's crazy. You know, mm -hmm. it's, not it's not you know 400 years ago wizards conspired yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like... I really, no i love the tongue-in-cheek stuff and the way you were describing like the shorthand so oh you see a creature with wings like i from that paladin's performance i know exactly what a paladin is like, Exa like that's exactly what that i was, mean yes that was so great and um i really i felt like whoever wrote and made it they they did it with love for the game and they got it and th the amount of easter eggs I was just so happy that somebody was like in a props department, like bringing all the things in. I I enjoyed like I'd never heard of the staff that does the portals. Yeah, I was wondering if that was real or not. Well, I was thinking, oh, that's so like Rick and Morty, like, come on. And then obviously the game portal and stuff. Right, I was going to say that. It's like it's really the game portal. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Right. But hey, um, we're kind of aligned in these ways. Um, yeah, but I just the joy i mean that's for me it's the joy of D, D. and and yes there are stat blocks and i really rely as like kind of like very bad with numbers crunch and i always look with admiration at min maxes i don't know if mm -hmm. you've ever had the misfortune to play with them at your table but, yeah um, the main character guy was a min maxer also oh my gosh yeah <laughs> i remember this one one uh min maxer guy and he was some kind of fighter and he had a special bow which meant like he could attack like eight times with this bow and like do so much damage it ruined the game so then the dm put him in like a box of like walls of force and he couldn't get... anyway it became this whole battle between an overpowered player and the dm like two gods mm -hmm. and the rest of us were like Maybe we'll order more food while this plays out over three hours. So um, what do you do when you have naughty, naughty? That's a terrible word. What do you do when you have like disruptor core or players at your table? Um, so d and is a I mean, social game. I have so watched, as a result, solutions are going to be... You, yeah, but I have very... watched you deal with incredibly drunk players. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I guess you could do the Irish goodbye on those players. Well, I just, I'm very passive. I don't know. I kind of just put up with it and I don't think yeah. that's the right thing to do. 
that is generally how I, I deal with it is I kind of just deal with it. I would say if like someone was writing me on my podcast that has ended, you know, but you can still check it out. It's on YouTube. I don't know, whatever. But, you know, I would say, you know, you should talk to them outside of the game at a time that was comfortable and say, you know, like, and, and don't be accusatory. You know, you could, you could try and bring that like, Oh, it's so fun. And this is awesome. And you know, there's the compliment sandwich or whatever, you know, the idea yeah. that you don't go like, Hey, the way you play is wrong. You know, you go like, Hey, you know, it's so fun doing this and I love this and that. And then there's this, you know, and, and also it's, it's important to kind of, you give the person a way out, you know, like a way to save face is like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure you didn't mean to, or this probably just my, like, what I like to do is like, <laughs> I phrase it like, look, man, I'm a fucked up guy. I'm a broken person. I'm incomplete. I, I'm helpless. I need help. I'm so broken. I need you to help. Otherwise I can't carry on. I'm so crazy that I just see this one little thing and it would help me so much. So it's like, it's not, you are fucking up. It's like, I just, yeah, I am the problem. I need to, but let me just talk you. about this. And yeah. I, I think that might be a really blatant lie, but that might be the social veneer you need to kind of broach the issue or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, I think, cause you have to talk about it. You have to talk about it openly. You need to not mm -hmm. engage the other person's defense mechanisms. And, you know, you got to hopefully work together to a solution. And maybe there's a solution. Maybe the person, you know, maybe the person there's sometimes like the person has a, a, a different problem that might be related to it. And so it's like, you're not even just, like bopping them on the nose, you might be helping them in a different way as well. Or, you know, right. maybe it actually helps them in their, they might seem like it, but they're not having a lot of fun. Or maybe they think they're having fun, but they're not, you know, I don't know, you know, I'm not trying to second guess other people's minds, but you know, yeah. it's just, it, it can be helpful to talk about problems, but you have to just be a little delicate. Otherwise it can be hard to actually make progress. Thank you. Although sure. I do, I do receive your point that the social aspect of D and D just the humans are just going to ruin it, whatever we do. That's well, I just mean that th th <laughs> there's no one solution because, yeah, yeah. because what I just described, you could be all like, yeah, but you don't know Carl. Carl hates that. And <laughs> what Carl needs is if you just, if you punch him in the stomach and then say whatever you need to say in German, he it works. <laughs> yeah. And so like, oh, like I'm not, I understand that like, not like you can ask for questions, but without knowing you, your friends, yeah, yeah, how yeah. they are, like you can never get too perfect of an answer, you mm -hmm. know, but but overall, it comes to, you know, just the basics of human con communication. Yeah. I always like to say that that most 90 plus percent of human problems are start, are, are caused by miscommunication. And then the yeah. others are like different value systems like, you and, know. Yeah. And Carl could like just I be hate. an asshole. Yeah, exactly. So, That's um, a value system. You know, he values being an asshole. It's like you could be <laughs> communicating perfectly to Carl and he's an asshole. And so it's not going to solve your problem. Yeah. But, 90% of the time it is going to be in this communication. Yeah. You know, probably exacerbated by Carl being an asshole, but you know, <laughs> I, I love this Carl character. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I sidetrack myself, but so Hollywood adjacent, we have this beautiful movie that you and I really enjoyed. And um, how do you feel about suddenly D and D is it's kind of like, it's not like a little secret anymore. It's, you know, out in, in every normal everyday shops have like D and D stickers and there's food with D and D on it now. And yeah, just how does it feel like to be out in the light? I guess. Uh, I think it's mostly good. Um, you know, I'm not going to lie. I'm a toxic person. <laughs> um, I, I do resent a little bit in a weird gatekeepy way. It's like, man, Everybody used to say I was a fucking loser. Like if I came along 10 years later, I could have done basically the same thing, but have been seen way differently by society. Right. You know? And so it's like, what? come on. Like now you don't even have to sacrifice being cool to do the things you like, you know, mm -hmm. which, which is good. But it's like, man, I wish I would have like benefited from that, you know? And, and then the other thing is just like in terms of toxic jealousy, it's like, man, I wish I was more centrally involved to this explosion that's happening i wish i could profit more from it you know like, yeah, yeah yeah i feel like i feel like obviously i don't know i truly do feel there's a lot of things the thing is like 
D and D live play podcasts are a lot older than people think. They just didn't catch on for for right. a long time. But they're a really old form of podcast, and podcasts are a pretty old medium, you know. Um, so like older than people think, you know. There's when podcasts became popular, but they were around for I think a decade before that. Wow, um, I didn't know that. I think the first one I stumbled across was Adventure Zone. Mm -hmm. So, but I didn't know that. Yeah. So D and D D and D big podcasts were Adventure Zone, Nerd Poker us um and then critical role and mm -hmm. i know adventure zone started playing D, &D because we did and i know um, oh wow yeah and so like i do think we were pretty important you know not not the lead or anything but i think we were part of growing the scene to where it was and 100%. i don't think it was i don't think it was me but i think it was like but i think adventure zone was a lot more impactful but again adventure zone might not have done it or you know maybe they would have seen it otherwise but like i'm saying it's like podcasts it's, there's these there's these really long old podcasts that just never got a lot of hits or whatever that are just these long old D, &D live play campaigns you know but but i think we were at least part of the wave and um but you know I think we kind so. of abandoned it uh, to do Harmon Quest. And then, you know, we stopped doing D&D on the podcast and stuff. And so like, right as the wave was starting to crest, like we, we pulled back and I was like, I wish I, I should like try and do my own thing to try and stay in the D&D &D scene. And I never did. And like, I'm just like, ah, it's all taking off. And I feel like so, so far from it. And I feel like I could have just done better choices to like be more central to how the scene is playing out. And I'm like, it's fine. I'm fine. Everybody, uh, I'm well, fine. But you know, I, I'm a, I'm a toxic person. So I know you're a toxic person and you're dying, but mm -hmm. I feel like this, this, um, I'm hoping that this thing that we're experiencing, whether it's like really cresting, like, you know, it's this big ocean of D and D will just become like installed as part of like, you have football, you have soccer, you have D and D. And, you know, that pie chart, I honestly believe there's so much pie to go around. Like if you ever feel like, hey, I'm dying, but I have like a, I took some vitamins this morning. Like there are places and things that people can always jump into, hopefully. That's the thing. It's like the scene is so healthy. I just am not really part of the scene and I'm not good at networking and stuff. And so it's like, it's really just being like, ah, uh, I guess what I'm seeing is my own like uh, weaknesses and being like, ah. This is I, don't know. I think if you did your own thing and even if it was like a quiet little thing, people would be desperate to kind of see and hear it because yeah, the the reason maybe people were inspired by those Harmontown episodes is you just brought so much joy and laughter by playing D and D and being that permissive DM with the the worldview. Oh, we can do anything. So that is still you. That's innate. You have the making magic. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, nice. I think yeah, you may, you you have the power within you to make thousands of people happy, and you could do that for a table in your in your back, you know, in your garage, or you could, you know, do whatever you wanted. <laughs> Sorry, that was a little bit of a pep talk, but it's okay. No, it's, it's also it's, like it's, very selfish because if you create stuff, I get to listen to it. So sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I have to make it. Like, I know. who knows? That's how the long worst. I hate editing stuff. I hate like when you record podcasts and you have to go and chop stuff and like upload it mm -hmm. maybe if it only gets jason, to be a lot after a while yeah if yeah. only jason could like help you out and do those bits i've been i've been training her on uh on using premiere so you know oh, there you go well um thank you so 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 much it's just been yeah. so wonderful to talk to you and thank you for going down all my silly uh yeah cul-de-sacs with me um but yeah i really really appreciate you i'm gonna say goodbye and then stop the recording and then we can say goodbye properly okay. after. so thank you so so much spencer for joining me it was really great to talk oh no i have to do the thing spencer is there anything you'd like to talk about or where can people find you online um i'm at the sixler on everything uh i guess just join my patreon patreon.com slash the sixler i've been trying to do D, D stuff every month as well as other stuff um but i don't know i've been i've been slipping a little bit but i'm trying to get back to doing it um I, it's just different stuff like i have these little dungeons i have subclasses and uh it's uh, it's it's a lot of fun i don't know well what's something interesting that i did recently uh i just made um i made a stand-up bard com like a stand-up comedian bard subclass 
that they kind of roast they roast the other enemy and they have like they they can they can do fire damage um basically they kind of like can debuff and then if their debuff results in the enemy failing at their task they can do fire damage to like add insult to in injury <laughs> and so yeah it's like a like a stand up bard and i'm i'm i think next month i'm coming up with a bunch of oozes i was just really inspired by a bunch of slime based based concepts mm. um so like i was i was just thinking like of of the idea of uh like slimes that they eat different precious metals and then you can hit them with hammers to like form them into the items and the slime like leaves the the metal <laughs> and then le and so it's like they're they're useful for forges because they're you know you could you could composite the exact kind of alloys you want and and form yeah. them the slime into the shape <laughs> i don't know so like just thinking of a weird so i i try to do you know i've done some magic items i've done you know sample encounters that you can throw in like it's just done a lot of random stuff i don't know it's very fun for me to do yeah. Um, and if you want to see what's going on, it's, it's very fun, you know, it's very spensary content, if that makes any sense. Like it's very, yeah. it's very in my wheelhouse. Yeah. And I think it's a lot of, a lot of cool stuff. I agree. And I will put links to the stuff. And mm -hmm. if I can figure out editing, I might be able to overlay some stuff you did. <laughs> be like, wow, cool. Um, but yeah. yeah, highly recommend Spencer. Thank you so, so much for joining me. And yeah, nice to meet you. Bye. Yeah. Thanks so much. See ya.